What is up YouTube? This is Colin and welcome to Hype Geeks, a new channel where we celebrate the hype and me going to town geeking about it. Today I'm joined by Nico. Yo. Uh, Nico is from Ungeek. Uh, again, if you've been checking Ungeek, you know you yeah. probably have seen us together, right? But today we're going to be talking about a familiar streetwear brand. Uh, it has taken the world by storm, um, it has made the world go bananas about it. Uh, and again, if you're not familiar with what we're talking about, we're talking about Bape or in its fullest form, a bathing, a bathing ape. ape in lukewarm water or simply known as a bathing ape. So just a little bit of history, uh, Bape started around the 90s. Uh, the reason why it's called a bathing ape in lukewarm water was because the founder, Nigo, is super obsessed with uh, Planet of the Apes. Yeah, the 1960s Planet of the, the Apes. The 1960s Planet of the Apes. And then there's also uh, a Japanese saying about a bathing ape in lukewarm water, which basically pokes fun at the culture, I think, of the Japanese youth during that time. Which is of overindulgence. Of overindulgence. Because apparently uh, in Japan, when you're taking a bath, they take a bath with a 40 degree Celsius water. But if you're, you know, if you're taking a bath and then it, the water goes lukewarm, it means you've overindulged in your mm, bath time. Okay. So that's the whole. Well, that's one aspect of it. I'm. We're not entirely sure which is which, but maybe you know it's a little bit of both, right? Mm. So for today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the brand. We're gonna be talking about uh, who, a little bit of the founder and the impact of Bape in the current fashion culture. And of course, and of course, Adidas. oh, and of course, and the new Adidas collab, and. We're gonna be answering the question, is it worth the hype? So, let's go. So first, let's talk about the founder, mm. Nigo, right? Uh, basically, he his real name is Tomoki, Tomoaki Nagao. Mm. Um, he's called Nigo right now. He goes by the name Nigo right now. And the reason why it's called Nigo is because during that time, like back in the 90s, he looks pretty much exactly the same. Mm as the godfather of uh, Japanese streetwear, uh, Hiroshi, Hiroshi mm. Fujiwara yeah. of Fragment. So they kind of look the same. Mm. And then wherever he, uh, Mr. Fujiwara would go, uh, Nagao would go as well, right? Uh, therefore, Hiroshi Fujiwara is one. And then Nigo means, mm. in Japanese means, two. two. Ichi. So ni. Ich, ich ni. See? Anime crossing over to Hype Geek. It works, it works. It, it works, right? <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the it's very interesting because like the mm. the fashion pedigree of Nigo basically revolves around him, Hiroshi Fujiwara, and Jun Takahashi of mm. Undercover. Mm. And Nigo was high school classmates with Jun Takahashi, mm. so that's where you know these people met each other and like look at them now. They're now like fashion legends, uh, not just in Japan but around the world as well. Mm. So it, it's very interesting, at least for me, in terms of like how the brand evolved from where it was in Japan mm. and how it got onto the world stage. Bape got started in the world stage mm -hmm. mostly because of Pharrell, Pharrell Williams. Yeah, okay. Like Nigo met Pharrell mm -hmm. who was back then part of the Neptunes. Mm -hmm. Well, until now actually. Yeah. Uh, Hip-hop producer duo. So, they met and well, magic, magic happened. happened. That's, that's also when uh, Nig that's also when Nigo got obsessed with the whole hip-hop culture, right? When he met Pharrell. Yeah. Okay. So, at that time, uh, ba Pharrell started wearing Bape and a lot of other hip-hop artists in the US started wearing Bape as well. So you had not only Pharrell, you even had Kanye West. Yeah, Kanye West wearing he Bape. He was wearing Bape, not wow. just Bape, uh, uh, Bape stuff. Yeah, okay. The because sneakers. He was wearing Bape stuff. Mm. Okay. So really that was the moment that Bape exploded and it kept on growing in popularity and until 2011. Mm -hmm. Well, it's still popular now, but 2011 was a big turning point for yeah. Bape because Nigo left the okay. brand. Uh, he sold it to yeah. I, he sold it to fashion conglomerate IT for mm. I think if the if, if my research is right around two point eight million dollars. Wow. Yeah, it's not. I mean, you but know, it's a big for a streetwear brand. That's that's true. That's true. That's true. I think IT just like expanded it more because during that time they had problems with uh, like keeping up with the demand. Mm. When the brand took a dive, Nigo had to leave, or at least not just had to leave, but at least sold it mm. when he saw the opportunity. But he's still designing until yeah. now, right? He's with. Uh, human made. Yes, with human made and billionaire. A billionaire bo boys. Club. Boys club. There we go. BBC. So and did you know mm. that Nigo is part of Uniqlo? Oh, is he? He's the creative director of the UT line. Wait, uh, wow, really? Since 2014. So we've been wearing Nigo stuff, or at least stuff that he touched. Yes. Wow. In a way. 
2014 was another turning point for Uniqlo because mm -hmm. before that the cuts were a bit different. Yeah, uh, the cuts were I think slightly slimmer and longer. Mm -hmm. But with Nigo uh, 2014, mm -hmm. the new collection of UT, mm -hmm. until now, um, the UTs were a bit more relaxed. Yeah, and the graphics were a bit more playful. Playful. Mm, okay, I see. Mm -hmm. So in a way, we can actually say that. Uh, this small, or at least what started out as a small design brand mm. in Japan, actually impacted like fashion in a grander scale, yeah. right? So let's bring it back to Babe. We've, yeah. We went to his other yeah, brands, yeah, but okay. really um, what he's doing right now at Uniqlo is in a way kind of a extension of the, what he was doing with Babe. Mm -hmm. He was playing with graphics. Mm -hmm. Right now, streetwear is very graphic heavy. Yeah. So imagine back in the 90s, you had Bape. Bape was way ahead of its time. Yeah. It was a playful brand. It was like super loud. loud. It was loud, loud graphics. You know, lots of colors. Mm. And uh, the pop culture influence was, yeah. you can really feel it through yeah. the design. Through the design, yeah. I mean, I think what I, I, I love about Bape until now mm. is that you get that Japanese, you know, loud vibe. Mm. Um, that usually is lacking from other streetwear brands. So now, since we're talking about Bape, some people uh, do say that after Nigo left, Bape yeah. spirit or Bape was no longer as special as, mm -hmm. as it once mm -hmm. was, but mm -hmm. it's still selling well. Yeah, like, it is. It's not as exclusive, but yeah. it's still selling well. There are still a lot of stores yeah. like all over Asia and in, like in the US, I think yeah. they have a Bape store there and as well. And every time there is a Bape collab drop, it gets sold out. Like, yes. Crazy sold out. Like Speaking the, of collabs. Speaking of collabs. Okay, so we're wearing the latest collab of Bape with Adidas. Mm. So this is this was released during the Super Bowl. Mm. Uh, or at least for the Super Bowl. Yeah. So, so it's a football inspired. It's a football inspired if you can't, you know. It's not the first Adidas and Bape collab. I mean no, they've yeah. already had collabs before. Before, like, like I think 2016 they yeah. had like the NMD ones. Mm. And then they recently had, I think last year was the Dame Force. The Dame Force, yeah. Um they also had I think later last year, they also had one. Mm. Um unfortunately the shoe didn't really actually you know what? That shoe did not sell well mm. because of the silhouette oh, okay and i think the fabric that they chose wasn't really that good mm. the track jackets mm. those got sold out and oh, okay. and the resale is crazy like the this was the last year one. this was the last year the black one and i think the resale right now is somewhere around twenty thousand pesos wow okay or, uh that's what around 400 mm, well, 400, 400 us dollars it is babe it is babe yeah so what i do love about babe is that um it, it did ride on the trend of luxury streetwear right mm. but it kept the playfulness mm. and the accessibility of the design um, more than i think other streetwear brands that just went out full luxury mm. um like example uh off-white is mm. one um and because the accessibility of the design at least is there and in terms of price it's not as high mm. as your other streetwear brands like supreme supreme mm. is like crazy expensive right or um, well, again, off white. I think those Supreme and off whites are my two like on the top of like, the most expensive mm. streetwear brands at this point. Bape kind of opened up its design and its fashion mm. to a whole lot of people. In fact, they created a diffusion line called Ape. Mm. So if you don't have the budget for Bape, you're gonna go for Ape. That's A A P E. Mm. But it's still expensive. It's still <laughs> expensive, but it's not as expensive as Bape. And I think. What I love about what they did, at least the design language mm. of it, Ape has a lot more, um, I guess, experimenting in terms of the design, in mm. terms of what they can actually uh, do. There's a lot more tech wear involved in Ape. Uh, with Bape, they kept a lot of the stuff that you know made them known, mm. which is basically the hoodie, this one, the shark hoodie, yeah. um, the the camo. Uh, and that's it. It's just iterations of different colors, um, collabs with different design houses, and um, IPs. Like uh, they did a Predator uh, one, and then I think the um, they did an anime too. I think Dragon Ball and Naruto. Yeah. For uh, Baby Milo, right? Mm. So, so let's bring it back to the Adidas so Bape collab. Let's bring it back to the Adidas collab. So compared to the other Adidas collabs that we talked about, this mm -hmm. is I think a bigger collection. This is a bigger collection. Yeah. This is um, uh, they have aside from the shoe itself, mm -hmm. which is. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, we'll, sh we'll, we'll shoot another video for the shoe. Mm. Aside from the shoe itself, uh, they do have, you know, a track jacket, um, a jersey. They have gloves, uh, leggings, um, even a football, mm. and the helmet. Mm. So it's like a complete set. You can, like, wear head-to-toe bape 
and go out and play <laughs> if you want to. No one will do that. But if you are hype enough, then yes, you can. If you play football. If you play football. Or even if you don't play football, you can just throw the ball. No? No. It doesn't work that way? No, it doesn't. That's the hype. Damn it. That's, that's, not that's what the hype is for. <laughs> but anyway, anyway. So I guess the real question right now that we're facing is that, is Bape worth the hype? What do you think, Nico? Yes and no. Yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. Yes because I'll hold this for you. Okay. okay. Yes because it's still the same brand. Like okay, the pieces that they are releasing right now mm. are still uh, similar to what they've been releasing before. Okay. And that's also the reason why mm. it's not because a lot of people say that eh, Babe's just really uh, rehashing everything. Rehashing There's everything. Not, yeah. Nothing new. Mm -hmm. So yes, if you've never owned a Babe uh, yeah. uh, piece. Yeah. I say that if you can afford it, mm -hmm. go for it. Go for it. Yeah. But you, if you already have one or two, maybe you can ease up on it. Ease up on it. All right. Or go with the collab. Um, go with the collabs. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I, I was about to say that. Um, what I love about the collabs is that it's the cheapest way to get a bape uh, shirt or whatever uh, that you won't really have to break the bank for it. But to be fair. Well, actually, no. I can't really say that it's it's the cheapest because like this shirt, this shirt costs eleven thousand at least in retail. Uh, and I got it in Taiwan. Uh, again, if you haven't seen the Taiwan vlogs from Carlo Ople, I'll link down below. But I got this for seven thousand two hundred NT, which is converted around thirteen grand. It's much more expensive there than it's here. So it's still quite expensive. Yeah, but um, if you can get uh, not the most expensive piece, fine. Cola. And if you feel that you like it, yeah, you can go for the actual vape stuff. Right? Okay, well, okay. On my end, I would say yes, it's actually worth the hype, particularly because of the heritage of vape. As you said, uh, I do love the idea that what you can get right now from it is sort of the spirit of what it was way back, mm -hmm. right? Um, and as I mentioned, it's one of the easiest streetwear brands to actually get into because the designs are varied and you have a lot of color options. Mm. What I really like about Bape is that in terms of design, they're, they're not afraid to have fun. You know, they don't take themselves too seriously and I think it's a reflection of we shouldn't really take ourselves too seriously. Okay, you know, it's kind of makes sense. Right? I mean, they're one of the few design houses that really own Camo mm. more than anything. I mean, Camo has been there for like the longest time. We've seen it in different uh, design houses. It's been used, overused. But it's the first time that a brand has captured the idea of Camo and the design pattern of it. That's solely them. You know, like if you see, if you see like a particular Camo design that's sort of near mm -hmm. to Bape, even though without the, the gorilla head, mm -hmm. people would say, is that that Bape? You know, you, you know what I mean? So I think for me, more than anything, I, I love that they were able to own it. It's really, really hard to own that space. I mean, it's not like a hard hard copyright that, oh, I'm going to sue you, uh, who's, who, whoever's going to use another camo, right? They're, they're not going to do that, right? But the attribute is almost always to them right now. Um, and that's a reflection of their success as well. Like if Bape did not blow up in the world stage, that would never happen. And for me, just the confluence of all of these little, I guess, uh, events from, you know, how it started, meeting Pharrell, uh, selling it to IT even, uh, blowing up to like different collabs, even partnering with Adidas, just to, you know, put the brand out there more, put the design out there more. It's a testament to the strength of the brand. Mm. And not just the strength of the brand, but to the reception of the people. They're in a time right now where in streetwear is the biggest, the innest thing ever. Like every other high-end luxury design houses wants a piece of pie of, you know, streetwear. And I think a collaboration with Bape is one of the easiest to own. Just to play devil's advocate. Okay. Uh, the only, I guess, I wouldn't say problem, but what I want from Bape mm -hmm. right now, or which I see lacking, is artistic vision. Mm -hmm. I feel like... They're still doing what they've been doing. Uh, they don't really have a strong vision of what else they could do. Like, 
uh, if you look at high fashion brands, for example, I mean, it's not the best com- comparison, but high fashion brands, for example, uh, when they get new creative directors, they still keep the heritage, but they do something new. But with Bape, they, they're just doing what they've been doing. Oh, okay. I don't feel... Uh, it's not as fresh anymore. I mean, yeah. if it's still your style, great. Yeah. But for me, I'm not gonna collect a lot of stuff. I'm just gonna get... Yeah. Just if, a couple of pieces. Yeah. I guess the lack of Nigo. Oh, uh, okay. So, Bape needs a Nigo. Yeah. They need... They need someone. They need someone. If you can put, like, someone there, who would you put? I don't know. I think they should go for someone new. Like... Like, totally new. Totally, totally new. Unknown. Yeah. Oh, totally fresh. Yes. Oh, you know what? If they actually do that, then they're going back to the spirit of Bape. Exactly. That's what I want uh, for Bape. All right. And that's it for us. Uh, we're going to be discussing about other Bape stuff. Again, we're going to be looking at the jersey and the jacket and this UB in the next episode. So stay tuned. Keep it here. And thanks for watching. Hey, what's up, guys? If you like this, please do give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. And hit that notification bell. We're going to be outing more videos. Uh, this is actually particularly hard. Uh, this is the first time we're doing this. So yeah, please kind of be nice to us. Uh, we're going to be better, I'm pretty sure, moving forward. But yeah, uh, we'll see you again on the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.